Hello, my name is Mike Lowe, and I'm the coordinator, biologist, and fish guy for the uh, Decho Aeron program, which is run through the Decho First Nations. Basically, what we're doing is we're getting communities to do their own research and monitoring when it's related to aquatic resources, so fish. So day to day, our uh, our work includes a bunch of stuff, um, mainly fish studies and uh, water quality work. Um, in the communities, we uh, we do a lot of uh, fish research. So we're we're catching fish in subsistence lakes, which are lakes that are are meant for food fisheries, um, which are important to the smaller communities. We go in there, we catch fish, we dissect them, uh, we analyze the aging structures, the bones in their ears to see how old they are, look at their sex and maturity, and uh, this is all helpful to the management of these lakes. Um, the other stuff we do is we, we do water quality samples. So we go to each of the um, tributaries along the Mackenzie and we sample the water, making sure that it's as clean as ever. I was always interested in biology. Um, it's quite a long, even though I'm young, it's quite a long story. My dad was the, the biologist, fisheries biologist here for fisheries and oceans. Uh, so I grew up working side by side with him, um, working on commercial fishing boats, traveling around the Great Slave Lake, traveling around Northwest Territories, um, doing all kinds of things, interviewing people, sampling fish. I, mean, I really grew to like it and I always had a, a fondness for biology. It, it all started at Diamond Jeunesse Secondary School where I, I got my grade 12 and another a big influence was Bruce Green, who you've heard about. He was uh, an excellent biology teacher and definitely piqued my interest. Um, after that, I got a diploma at Nate in Renewable Resource Management and then Royal Roads, I got uh, a degree in Environmental Management. And then I went to U of A and took a bi Bachelor of Science degree in biology. Yeah, it's 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 going to the communities and um, and and combining science, Western science, with uh, um, traditional knowledge systems that have been placed in the area for years, and seeing seeing how they compare the similarities and the differences. And basically, they're the they're both knowledge systems, and they they both have the same objective, just a different way of going about it. So it's it's really interesting to see those uh, comparisons. Have, since it's National Science Literacy Week, do you have any suggestions for books people could read? To get, yeah, oh, definitely. Um, so, I grew up. I wasn't the biggest um, the the reader of, of novels um, or 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 non or fiction. I was always reading nonfiction. So, actually, the biggest one of the biggest influences were National Geographic magazines. My dad had uh, basically every every issue um, going. I don't know how far back. And then some other ones are. Um, basically anything written on the Nahani River. Um, there's one by a guy named Patterson, which is just amazing to see these these people. They were they were basically naturalists at the time. They would uh, they you know they would canoe up these major rivers, pull themselves up, canoe themselves up, overwinter there, trapping and recording all their observations, and making notes. Oh, there's a great book by um, I can't remember the author, but it's called Being Caribou, and they they with their their young son they uh, they 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 followed the porcupine caribou herd through the Yukon the Northwest Territories and they did it all on skis and it's uh, it's an amazing story and it it, uh, it really brings you one with the nature shows you like it, you, you get past that science boundary and you sort of become one with nature happy national science literacy week